morning. It's Janly Herb and Gypsy Crochet. Slightly different start to the morning. <laughs> this is what I've taken photographs of yesterday. They all need to be measured and to put on my Etsy shop. Uh, there's Paris. She's saying hello to you. She's not really dressed but she's got her shorts on. Then we go outside to what I've got to do today. Thankfully, as you can see, it's a beautiful, beautiful day and uh, at least the sun's shining for what I've got to do today. This is a pile of crochet items I've got yet to photograph and if that's not enough, there's a whole suitcase full of things that I've got to <laughs> photograph as well. So my back is going to really enjoy this. I've brought my perching stool out. Because my back is going to go, Nye! I've got one mannequin poised next to all my flowers. These are the two latest things that I've finished off. Um, I will show you the patterns, although it won't be much good to you actually because, um, you know, they're not available. Uh, this other pile on the table is ready for Paris because these are small fitting items and they won't fit the big mannequin. Right, having said that, I'm going to sit down because I haven't even started yet and my back is already hurting. <laughs> Which is not a good start, is it, to the day? Right, let me see if you can see me. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm outside and you can't hear me, I'll come a bit closer. But I'm not using the... The, the other mic wasn't much use at all. In fact, I think you can hear me less with the other bike than you can with this one. Right, let's see where we're at. Hello, people. Right, well, I showed you what I've just finished off. The pattern for the turquoise one was in the magazine, Katia. A very old magazine. I think it's mostly knitting. And I actually think that Sue brought it back for me from when she was on one of her trips to, to France. As you can see, I, the tension on mine wasn't right. It's supposed to only have about four patterns up to the neck, and I've got about eight. But what can you expect when it's a Spanish magazine? <laughs> Loosely translated to the English. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I didn't bring the pattern out for the other one, but you've seen it before. Anyway, it's a bit of an old, ancient thing. The one where she had the wig on. Excuse me, I'll have to sit back. My back's hurting already and I haven't started taking photos. Oh, it's not going to be a good day, but it's beautiful out here. In fact, I'm sorry I put this black dress on, but, um, you know, I thought I might be tempting fate if I put a sundress on. Ah, for those of you who are interested, I've got purple beads on today. <laughs> right, what am I doing at the moment? Well, what I was crocheting on the live last night was this. It's just going to be a, a top. I don't know whether you can see the colours. The colours are absolutely beautiful. They're so subtle. So gorgeous. The yarn is something I've had forever in a day. I've been stash diving. Well, actually, I was not stash diving today. I was tidying up under the knitting machines and everything. And I found two big bags full of wool I've completely forgotten about. Gorgeous wool, which I'll show you in another video, um, that I bought some time in the past and it was all like fine, shaded, beautiful stuff, for, you know, for shawls and things. Anyway, this is what I'm using at the moment. It's a nice yarn, but it's a pig <laughs> to crochet with because it goes all thick and thin and it's textured and it looks absolutely gorgeous when it's done. But I'm having to crochet um, in between the stitches. Don't worry, you can see or not. Because I cannot go into the stitches, you just cannot do it. It's just too bubbly and too thick and thin. So I gave up and I decided to, to do it in between. So what I'm actually, what I actually wanted to make was this. But I couldn't do it because you're supposed to do, in English, one treble, one chain, one treble, one chain. And then in the next row you go into the treble, you go into, you know, you miss the chain. 
And of course I couldn't go into the trebles because I couldn't find them in that one. So mine is just all over, but as you can see, it's so lacy. It's on a big hook that uh, it's going to turn out looking very, very similar to that. Yeah. So that's what I'll be finishing off next. Right, what am I doing? Well, I'm not doing anything else besides that. This came with um, Simply Crochet, which is the issue 99. And it came with, oh, knocking my table about, I've got my coffee on there. It came with this insert, which is called Beautiful Homes. I'm going to have to find a home for all these inserts, you know. I do have a friend who belongs to a knitting club. So I've got a box full of all those amigurumi things. But I need to find all the patterns that go with all the amigurumi kits. I need to get rid of things. I'm hoarding far too much stuff that I will never ever use. So that's what's in this one. What do you say? It's a book that somebody could make use of, but not me. And no, I'm not posting it abroad, sorry, and all that. <laughs> if you're in the UK, you're welcome, but but not if you're in America. I can get my niece to put it in the post, you see, if, uh, if you're in the uh, UK. And then it's just got some cushions, you know, that match. Ooh. Something white just appeared over the hedge there next door. I don't know what they're doing. And that's just an advert for Wet Yorkshire Spinners. It's um, Colour Lab. It's 100%... British wool available in solid colours and self striping shades. That's just an advert. Right, we'll get on to the magazine itself. It's uh, got a shawl on the front, which is very pretty. Seeing as I've just found all that wool for shawls, yeah. Sorry about the table, it's not very stable, it keeps going bump bump every time I go anywhere near it. You can tell I'm not prepared, it's Sunday morning. It's half past twelve. I've been up since eight o'clock, yes. Even though I didn't go to bed till three after the live last night. I woke up feeling full of the joys of spring. Yeah. This is especially for Nicka. It's a bag with factors on it. <laughs> I don't know whether it's in the magazine or not. I'll let you know in a minute. I haven't really looked at me what's in it yet. I had a quick glance when it arrived. Because of course I have to send for everything by post these days. I can't go out to the shop. Right. Let's see what they have. Oh, this lady I like. I did find her on um, YouTube. But she's got some, pa uh, some uh, tutorials with uh, English subtitles. But mostly she's Spanish. She's called Marie Castro. She does some really gorgeous, colourful work. I absolutely love it. So I have actually, you know, like marked her to watch amongst my many thousand YouTube videos that I haven't watched, uh, even though she's in <laughs> Spanish. But about five of her videos have got English subtitles, so it's not too bad. Oh. The sun's gone in, but don't worry, because it's all fluffy white clouds up above, so I can be back at it. Right, uh, these I think are ready for festivals, if ever there was any. Poncho, and then this marvellous headwear. It's not the kind of thing to go to Tesco's do your shopping in, is it? But if you're young and you go to festivals and things, that marvellous. And a lovely little bag, which again is the same thing, isn't it? And a festival top that's like a rainbow. I think this is a maybe an issue that they put together before the lockdown, yeah. There's a skirt at the top. And then you've got these barefoot sandals which I really don't see the point of. They look decorative, but what use are they? It's still burning feet on the sand. Yes. 
Let's have a look what else we've got in. Oh, that's, that's showing a little close-up detail of the skirt. Again, I think this issue is aimed at the younger, boho, trendy kind of people. For those of you who do amid the rulers, we've got panda love. I mean, I agree that they're very, very cute, but it's not something that I would ever make. See, I told you the sun's coming out again. I told you. Let's have another look. Jelena's journals from the studio. Well, it's geometric design. It's another lady who likes colour and her article about it. Now this I do love. This has got to be earmarked for me. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? A lovely long jacket. It'd be fantastic, wouldn't it, in the autumn? You know, to go over one of my long dresses or over trousers and a top. You know, you could dress up something that was plain white or brown or whatever colour. I'd wear like a single colour underneath it, I think. You know, like they've used a, a, a khaki green dress. But I absolutely love that. That is definitely going to be on the list for myself. That's the back view of it. It's done in... Kinko bamboo cotton double knit. I love working with that kinko. It's not the cheapest, but it is nice, very nice. It's on a 4mm, which is a USG, and a 5mm, which is a US 7. So it's very nice. I like that. I really do like that. And we've got little things to add to your key ring. And then we've got a little sloth or sloth, whatever you want to call it, that you sew onto a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. My back is already hurting. I've got loads of things to do today. I think I need to take two painkillers even though I don't want to. They dull my senses. And there's yet another episode of this sweater. You have to be, have been following this magazine for about X number of weeks to have done it. This is a beautiful, beautiful shawl. It's the one that's on the front cover. It's done in Kinko Riot. I think that's what I've, well, I've got very similar to Riot that I just found today. And it's on a 4.5mm US 7. It's very pretty. There goes Jess. Beautiful Alsatian lives at the bottom house. Um, it's versatile triangular shape, allows for multiple ways to wear it, and the scallop shell and the tassel edging finishes it off nicely. I do like that. And I like doing shell stitch, so that could be on the list for that yarn I've just found today. Uh, who's this lady? Oh, she's Yorkshire based. Lisa Richardson. She draws upon the stunning surrounding countryside as she comes up with her latest creations. And Miguel will like this because it's a picture of the head. <laughs> Those are her stunning creations. Um, this is a blanket, throw, whatever you want to call it. It's actually got hearts on it in the field. Stop leaning on the table, Janet. You're going to tip your coffee. Yeah, the heart motif double filet. Uh, what's this one? Small stitches, big business. Turn your crochet kills it, skills into cash. That would be great, wouldn't it? Look at all that. I've got to turn into cash. <laughs> As you may have known if you were watching the, um, the live last night, I am contemplating moving, but it's not imminent. I'm just preparing myself for a move maybe in the next 12 months where I've got to uh, downsize a lot of the stuff I've got hoarded around here. As you know, I've not bought any yarn since Christmas, really. I think I bought one lot since Christmas. That's what I made the hooded jackets, you know, the campfire jackets with. And they're all going on, let's say. They've all had their faulties done. Um, what's this one? Oh, 
what's this lady doing? Let's have a see. Oh, she's doing amigurumi. Where amigurumi is? I like the headdress. Very sort of Frida Kahlo, isn't it? Oh, the pattern. The pattern is for the bag is here, me go. Tickle your fancy with the cactus. But it does have the dreaded pom poms on it. But I suppose you could leave them. I should say that Miguel's got a hatred. I have a hatred for cactus or cacti, whatever you want to call them. And Miguel's got a hatred for pom poms. So he winds me up with either mentioning cactus or the rosy wrap head band that I once modelled on a live and had everybody in hysterics because they just do it to me. And he keeps saying, where's your rosy wrap? And I think, I don't know where, where it's gone. We can't conveniently lost it, if you know what I mean. That's a... Uh, is it? I think that's done in corner to corner, I'm not too sure. As you know, corner to corner is not my favourite thing. This is what is going to be in next month's issue. Quite nice. That's a quiet today. Is it because it's Sunday of the Old Country Church? I don't know where they are. Manny next door that way are in the garden, so maybe because they live in the hedge between the two of us, so they could have decided to go elsewhere. I mean, when my niece was here yesterday, they were swooping about all the Oh, there they go, they're making a noise now. You've heard me. That's a mosaic. I mean, she's got it showing on a table, but, whoops, but I think it's actually meant to be a throw. And that I do love. I wish I could sell baby clothes. I absolutely adore doing baby clothes. Oh, there's my little bird. This one's just arrived from somewhere. It's just flown in the head. So maybe you'll get some chirping after that. Right, that's this is Derrimore Studio Cotton. Looks very pretty, but it's probably expensive. Yeah. But having said that, you only get what you pay for, and I'm doing contortions here now, trying to get to my copy. Um, but I really have got so much yarn that um, I need to downsize drastically. Please don't suggest I do blankets for charity because that's just not within my grasp at all. I need to make money and I'll give it away. <laughs> when it comes to the crunch, eventually when I do happen to come to move, maybe in 12 months time or whatever, then I might have to think about, you know, donating some. But for the time being, no. Oh, beautiful butterfly. See, I'm so easily distracted, aren't I? Oh, look at that beautiful butterfly. That was my dad's nickname for me when I was little, well, apart from a few others that we won't care to mention. One of them was Butterfly Brain. Because he'd be talking to me and I'd be going, ooh, look at that. And he'd be going, will you concentrate on what I'm talking to you about? He said, you've got the brain of a butterfly. I do. When I'm talking to people, I tend to go off on a tangent. Start off talking about one subject and I flow off into another one. <laughs> People find it terribly difficult to follow me. My ex husband, in particular. He used to say things, excuse me, but who are we talking about now? Are you still talking about so and so or have you gone on to talk about it now? I said, keep up, keep up. I changed the subject five minutes ago. And he goes, well, you could have told me because I, I didn't know you changed the subject. <laughs> He didn't listen anyway. Anyway, I'm going to have to start, going to have to leave you and start. I think some of these things in the suitcase, I have already taken photographs of, which will be a big bonus if I've already got the photos taken. Uh, I'll just have to revive them. For the moment, I'm, I'm uh, experimenting with postage free on my Etsy shop, but depending on how much Etsy takes off me, you know, commission-wise and everything like that, it might only be for a short period. So I'm 
so if you were thinking of buying anything, you might as well zoom in while it's still postage free. Because <laughs> I might find it's not um, economically feasible to do it that way. Especially if my things are going to America and, you know, it's costing me a small fortune to post them. But we'll see how we go. So if things, you know, see, you, you sort of go, oh, that's a bit pricey from my Etsy shop, remember. If you're in the States, you're not paying about 15 to 20 pounds postage on that, yeah, remember. That is incorporated at the moment in the price. So, if you fancy anything, now is the time to jump in. I'm doing my little own commercial, aren't I? Come to Jan, come to Jan's Etsy shop. Come and browse and buy. But come tomorrow when I put things on. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I could do a commercial, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah. And while you're visiting my shop, you can visit Kelly's as well. I think she's thinking of putting her Etsy shop back up again, I don't know. But she's had a headache this week, so she's not going to do it. But she's got a web page. Don't forget, she's got a web page with things for sale on. Crafted by Kelly X. Yeah. So do go and visit her. Cheer her up for a headache. <laughs> yeah. That girl is like a little machine. People say, don't you crochet fast, John, and I'm like, no. I'm slow, I'm the tortoise compared with Kelly. Kelly goes, right, I'm thinking of starting this cardigan, and then about two days later, she goes, ta-da! <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm starting mine, I've been square. <laughs> but still, I should slow down, because I need to sell something before I make anything else, but I can't stop. Other people are addicted to alcohol, to drugs, whatever. I'm addicted to yarn, although I've cured myself a little of that compulsion to buy every yarn I like. Um, but I'm still addicted to crochet. But it has to be crochet that I like. Is it funny? I don't know whether you're the same. But people say to me, why don't you crochet an afghan? Why don't you do that? No. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Same with amigurumis. I like to look at them. I think they're very, very sweet. They're very cute. Ask me to make you one. No. If I'm crocheting something I don't like doing, I completely go off everything. I completely lose my crochet. The whole thing goes out the window. I've got to be enthused, you know, about what I'm making. It inspires me. I can crochet like the wind. But if I'm, like, not interested in what I'm crocheting, I might as well just unravel it all. Just give it up as a bad job because it'll never get done. I keep saying I've got to finish that knitted cardigan that's been on the needles for about four years. Just needs two sleeves. But it's in chunky knit and it's on an 8mm needle, so I don't know why I am procrastinating. So I just keep looking at it. And it's in a lovely, lovely bag. Grace, um, what's it called? GP Maltese bought from me. A beautiful bag. You know, a carry bag like with a zip top and everything and places for your yarn. So it shouldn't be in there taking that lovely bag up. It shouldn't be in there. It should be set free to the world. <laughs> so if you ever see anything knitted for sale on my shop, don't be like scratching your head thinking. She gone a bit, ooh. It'll be because I've actually finished that cardigan. Because it's been on the needle so long, I don't think it fits me. Oh, oh, sorry about that. I'm just trying to get me remote control. I had to buy a new one because I broke the last one. The last one ran out of battery. And it's got like a little tiny thing that you're supposed to press and slide. I pressed, I slid, I moved it this way, that way, the other. And eventually, impatient Janet gets the nail file and flicked it out and broke it. So I had to. I searched all day, all evening to try to find this on um, eBay. And I said to Kelly, you don't have to know where I can get one from. And within about 10 minutes, this link comes back from, it, from eBay. There you go. She's the e eBay and Amazon queen at finding me anything I can't find. I type it all, you know, whatever. Can I find it now? Man, yeah, I've gone back to my second childhood. You know, I've got the doll's house, which... My son still doesn't know anything about because he doesn't watch this video. And um, 
somebody was talking on this page called Memories that I watch uh, on Facebook. It's from my old home, old hometown. And they were talking about, do you remember kaleidoscopes? And I thought, I used to love my kaleidoscopes. And I watch a programme on TV called Repair Shop. And somebody brought this very, very old kaleidoscope in. And this guy fixed it all up. And I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. So what did I do? I goes on Amazon. Finds that they still have kaleidoscopes. So Dumbo has to order one as well. I should be taking things out of the house at this stage of my life, not bringing things in. But, yes, I'm just a hoarder. Anyway, this hoarder has got a lot of things to do, and it's one of those little teeny weeny. I don't think they're wasps. They look like wasps, but they're teeny. Just went almost in front of the camera. So, I'm going to go now before anybody starts mowing along or hammering and banging, which is their want on a Sunday afternoon. And I will speak to you very, very soon. So, thank you for keeping me company and bye for now.